Okay guys, in this video, what we're gonna go into is basically how we can use thermochemical equations and basically how we can also solve for uh, energy change when we have a temperature change, okay? So to do that, if we wanna know what our energy change is anytime we warm something up or cool something down, we need to know three things about that substance, okay? So if you think about it, what are some things we might need to know in terms of the energy change for a substance? Well, first of all, if we're gonna warm it up and cool it down, we probably need to know what it is, okay? So are we dealing with water? Are we dealing with ethanol? Are we dealing with aluminum? Are we dealing with a solution of a mixture of things? So what are we working with? Because with the type of substance is gonna be a factor. Second thing is, how much do we have? Do we have 100 grams of it or do we have 200 grams of it? Do we have 1,000 grams of it? So how much is another thing? And finally, how much are we actually gonna be changing that temperature, okay? So what's our starting temperature and what's our ending temperature, okay? Those three variables are going to give us the information we need to actually solve for the energy change if we modify the temperature of a substance, okay? So let's take a look at those things in a little bit more detail. And in particular, let's take a look at this idea of the type of substance because we have a new term here called specific heat capacity. So what we're looking at is um, when you have every single substance, it has its own specific heat capacity or basically this capacity to absorb and release energy. And it's actually a numerical value that we can use as part of our calculation, okay? So here's a list of specific heat capacities. So you see aluminum there is 0.897, and you know, ethanol is 2.44, and so forth and so on, okay? Um, one thing we wanna make a note of is that every substance has its own specific heat capacity. And if you wanna define the word specific heat capacity, we're talking about the energy it needs to raise one gram of the substance one degree Celsius, okay? So it's kind of like our standard. So if we say, okay, if I have one gram of water, I want it to go up one degree Celsius, how much energy is that gonna take? Well, it's gonna take 4.18 um, joules of energy to do that. Now, if we take a look, water is kind of amazing. If we take a look at the different substances, you know, we have lots of specific heat capacities on here, but water stands out as being extremely high in comparison to most of the other substances, okay? Um, ethanol being close to it. Now again, if you think about why is that po a possibility? Well, water has very strong hydrogen bonding. So with water's hydrogen bonding, it requires more energy for you to change its temperature because of that hydrogen bonding, okay? Ethanol also hydrogen bonds. So you see ethanol is a 2.44. So you start to see that the things that have stronger intermolecular forces are gonna be things that take more energy for them to change temperature, okay? So water is one that we'll be using a lot. Notice though, right below water, we have ice. And then we also have water vapor. So um, every substance has its own specific heat capacity and it changes depending on the state of matter in which you're in. Okay? Now, the only one on this list that we actually listed three times was water, because we deal with it so often in both its liquid form, its solid form, and its gaseous form. Everything else up here, we're assuming it's the state of matter at which they are at a room temperature. Okay, so for iron, it would be solid. For gold, it would be solid. For hydrogen, it would be um, a gaseous state and so forth and so on, okay? Um, so that's kind of how those, those kind of work, all right? There's also star by the one for water vapor being 1.9 because that actually number will change the warmer you get the gas. So it's actually a variable that happens as you warm up a gas. So the 1.9 is, is consistent with being really close to the boiling point of water, maybe a little bit above the boiling point, but not you know thousands of degrees Celsius as we move forward, okay? So when we do some calculations here, we wanna make sure that we have an equation that works with it, and that equation that we use is Q. Now Q is our measure of energy. It's very similar to delta H that we talked about before, but in this case, because we're not talking about an enthalpy change within a chemical reaction, we designate it Q instead, okay? So Q is our energy in joules, M is our mass, C, capital C, is our specific heat capacity. And then we have a change in temperature, a delta T, okay? So if we take a look at our units, um, the Q will be in joules. Now that's different, not kilojoules, but it's joules. Masses in grams. Temperature can be in Celsius or Kelvin here. So we actually can work in Celsius here because we're always solving for a change in temperature. And if you're doing a change in Celsius, it's no different than a change in Kelvin. So those, both temperature scales are workable here, so we don't need to convert for this one. And finally, the specific heat capacity itself is labeled in joules per gram degree Celsius. So which makes sense because we have joules per gram in degree Celsius is gonna be our specific heat capacity, okay? So those are three variables. Uh, sometimes you'll hear this phrase called MCAT. So basically, uh, if you ask me a question like, how do I do this? I go, use MCAT. 
That's just, this is what I'm referring to, okay? Uh, you may also hear it referred to as M ka delta T. Uh, I'm not really sure why that is. Ka delta, maybe there's a delta, and a T, I don't know. But I think M cat is a much better way of doing it, and that's just kind of the way I always kind of call it um, to reference it. It's kind of like Pivnert. We have Pivnert, and we have M cat, and we have all the kinds of little phrases for our different equations, okay? Now, one thing to make note of, just like before, if we're talking about exothermic and endothermic reactions, if you have a temperature final that is less than your initial temperature, you should solve and get a Q that is a negative value, right? Because when we do a change in temperature, we always want to say temperature final minus initial. So when you do a change, you always take your end minus your start. Okay, that's kind of the way we do it. So if your final is less than initial and we subtract them, we should get a negative Q. Okay? If our final is greater than initial, we should subtract and we should get a positive Q. Okay, which would make sense because if you are cooling something, if this, if you're taking something and it gets colder and colder and colder, it's actually releasing energy, right? So as you're releasing energy, that is going to be a negative Q because your final will be less than the, the initial. Again, we're talking about the system, not the surroundings here. Okay? And if you're endothermic and your final is greater than your initial, okay, you've now warmed it up, so, so it's actually gained energy, so that substance as it gains energy is going to be a positive Q, or you have an endothermic process happening to that substance that you're working on. Okay? So that's our equation. Let's do a kind of a quick calculation based off of that. So we do a little number cruncher here. So what's the energy change for water when 50 grams of it goes from 100 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius? Okay, again, the specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And let's kind of work this guy out, okay? So we have um, 50 grams of water. So in our equation for Q equals MC delta T, our mass is 50 grams of water. We started, our specific heat capacity is 4.18 joules per gram degree C. And our change in temperature and we start at 100, and then we're going to 60, okay? So we kind of imagine what happens here. Um, we take this, we start with 50 grams of water. Energy is leaving that, so as the energy leaves that, we cool it down to 60 degrees Celsius. So as the energy goes away, it actually cools down. So we start off at 100. And the final temperature is 60, because we always want temperature final minus temperature initial when we do our math here in degree C. Now mathematically, grams are going to cancel, degree C are going to cancel, and we're going to be left with joules because we're solving for Q, which should be in joules. Okay. So if we plug these numbers in now, we take the 50 times the 4.18 times basically a negative 40 here. Okay. We have a negative value, so we should end up with a negative number here because we should be having a process of exothermic or leaving reaction out. Okay, So we do that, we plug our math in, we have we have a negative 8,360 joules, which then gives us our value for a Q. Okay? Keep in mind we need to have that negative sign there to represent that the water is losing energy by going through this process where we have an exothermic process happening here. Okay, Alright guys, we're going to end the video here. Uh, we'll come back to class tomorrow and do some more practice with this and then talk about how this applies to thermochemical equations. Thank you.